Hey, Dr. Joel here again, and today I have a new feature I want to show you. It's called Cal Update. It's a way to refresh your calibration without disconnecting anything. It's a recent firmware enhancement, and hopefully you'll find it handy. For this experiment today, I've got switches in front of an eCal and uh, measuring the through of the eCal. Uh, from port two to one to two, I have a cable, but you can ignore that. Here the switches are supposed to be identical. I've made the two blue cables exactly the same, and I'm hoping I can switch them without having any effect on the measurement, but it'll turn out that that'll cause a big ripple in the eCal uh, through. So let's see how we make that measurement. Let's switch here to the screen capture, and you can see I've got the S43 and the S33. The S33 is the input match, and I'll stick that into memory so we can record it for later. Now I'm going to change the switches. I can do it through this program. So I've gone through the different path, and this path should be the same. But look at the tremendous ripple. I've got something like uh, 2 dB per division, so 4 or 5 dB of ripple on the input match, the S33. Although the S43 only has a little bit of ripple. Let me create a new trace, and one of the ways to evaluate the ripple is to take the difference between the uh, measurement before switching and the measurement after switching. So we can use the equation editor to capture that difference. We'll say the S33 minus the memory trace of trace 1 and enable it. And now if we look at this, we can see, if I zoom in on that, the marker says... Uh, minus 21 dBc. So that's like a 21 dB directivity. Normally we'd expect 40 or 50 dB directivity. And that directivity change is caused by the changing in the switch. We can also see that the uh, worst case dip in is always aligned with the um, highest peaks in the directivity change. So if I turn the equation editor off, and let's take a look at switching the switches back again. And I'll show you how we do the Cal update. So here we're looking very good. We're lined up again. The switches are quite repeatable. And I'll scale that down so we can see it quite clearly, 2 dB per division. And now we can use the Cal, Cal update feature to essentially initialize the measurement. And that captures the initial state of the data from the input port of the analyzer all the way to the reference plane. And we can auto set the gates or we can manly, manually set the gates. And here I'm setting it to about the same number. And I've performed the initialize with that manual setting. Now watch what happens when I change the switch position. So this has caused a mismatch change. It causes our ripple. And I can go back to the math function again and re-verify what that ripple is. And we see the same number, uh, minus 21, minus 22 dB. And now, here comes the magic of the Cal update. We're going to get rid of all that ripple on the S11, or S33 measurement. So we go to Cal update. We say recorrect. Finishes its update Cal. And now, that ripple worst case number is... 40 or 41 dB, that's almost as good as a mechanical cal kit. If I auto scale here on the S33 trace, we only see a tenth or two deviation from the original value. That's down from 4 or 5 dB. So it's a dramatic improvement and we haven't had to disconnect or recalibrate anything. Now on the S43, the through trace, yeah, we still see ripple. It's about 0.1 dB. And in fact, the Cal update only updates the directivity term, so we really don't see any difference. If I go back to the original Cal set, switch standard two, instead of Cal update, I see almost the same ripple. So we really don't see any difference in the through measurement, but where we see a big difference is in the uh, return loss measurement. And in fact, this will only correct for uh, ripples on the order of less than about minus 25 dB directivity error. So we just switch back to the original Cal set, so we'll switch the switches back to the original state, and of course everything returns to being almost perfect. 
And if we like, we can actually uh, scale this up and take a look at the residual error of the switch switching to the same position. So here we'll switch to the wrong position and back again to the initial position. And we'll see, we see no ver uh, deviation of that uh, return loss trace at all. Those switches are more than 70 dB repeatable. Even if we narrow the eye of bandwidth to one kilohertz, and look down a longer ways, we still don't see hardly any switch error. So these key sight switches are really quite good. And generally you wouldn't need to use this Cal update to improve it. But if you have poor switches that have bad repeatability, yeah, then the Cal update will make a bad switch look good. And here we do it once again. Again, we've got that 40 dB residual directivity after the Cal update. The Cal update depends upon a system default calibration, which is a broadband calibration. And uh, if you have the TDR application, it comes from the factory that way, or you can create your own. Okay, so now let's take a look behind the scenes. I'm going to add a new standard channel, and it's going to have a broadband sweep, and I'm going to apply a system cal. It's not exactly the same as the system cal. It's the JD system cal. And this is going to let us see what we're doing to correct the uh, bad response of the switches. So we'll switch to an S33 measurement here. And we can see now the return loss of both of the switches and the ECAL module. So that's everything connected together. And uh, I'll reset this for uh, doing a time and domain low pass measurement. And then we'll go to the uh, math function and turn on the time domain. Oh, missed it there. Time domain. Turn it on and we'll zoom in on this. So I'll set the start at about minus one nanosecond. That's behind the test port and the stop will leave the same and we'll auto scale. And uh, let's zoom in on this and take a look at what we see. So here, where the marker is there, that's about where the ACAL is, but that's the end of the CAL plane in the other channel. Here at the beginning, we can see the input match, for, and the calibration here is done at the input port. And the two bumps in the center are really where the switches are located. So that time domain response represents the error we're trying to capture and remove. And uh, now I switched it back to the original setting, so in the upper trace, we can see uh, the response we see now. We'll stick data into memory here. And we can see the difference between the original setting, that very slight uh, difference between the red and the yellow trace, is the error caused by switching the switch path. And that tiny little difference is what causes this uh, bad response when I take a sweep. And here I'll auto scale again on this and get the bad response from the switch. So that's all caused by just that small error in that region right there where the switches are uh, changing path slightly. A uh, real switch doesn't change path, of course. It's just the switch context change directions. So here in the Cal update, I once a last time, I'll do a recorrection. And uh, we can see it's all perfect again. So that's how the Cal update works. We operate by looking at the response between the test part of the analyzer and the reference plane where you've done your user calibration. It's all part of the automatic fixture removal. And in fact, you have to have the AFR to get the Cal update function in here. You can see the AFR uh, model number is S93007A or B. It'll be uh, the latest firmware will support both. This new capability first showed up in the firmware revision a.15.65.17, and here's a uh, snip of the What's New page, and you can see the Cal update there. And lastly, I'd like to do a shout out to Gen Tokumoto and uh, Yasuaki Komatsu, who, along with myself, uh, received a patent for this new method on removing the effects of instabilities in measurement systems. I hope you enjoyed this, and thanks for watching.